Hey, everybody. So here we are. And I feel like sometimes we get bogged down with Faraday's law and Lenz's law and using our right hand with everything. And we kind of lose the point. What is the point? Oh, yeah. The point is, is that what we're talking about now is the basic physics that basically powers our civilization. That's it. No big deal. But before we get into the electric generator, I think I want to go back a little bit and talk a little bit more about electric motors. Now, on the first day of this unit, we took a look at our galvanometer, and I utilized a solenoid and a magnet to show that current could be induced. I then, I think, in a separate sort of live lecture, talked about how I could take a small electric motor, and while this is not connected to any power supply, if I do mechanical work to it by turning this, I can induce a current within the loop. And I can see that present on my galvanometer. Huh? Yeah, you know what I'm doing? I'm making electricity. Not very much, but there it is. Now I can take that same electric motor, and this time, instead of manually turning it, I can use it not as a generator, but as a motor. Here I have these two wires are connected to my DC power supply, which if you remember, it's in the back of the room. Right now it's set at only five volts. So I can take five volts of DC power and I can connect it to the back of my motor. Oh, guys, it's just an electric motor. You've seen thousands of these in your lifetime. Very simple. Actually, that one costs 99 cents. Radio Shack. Oh, except the Radio Shack doesn't exist anymore. But there it is, a 99 cent motor. Now, yeah, you see it? You do, don't you? Right here. This is an Edison DC motor. I found it when I moved into the physics room, actually back in the old wing, uh, and I inherited this from Mr. Devantry as well. It is a classic uh, example of one of Thomas Edison's first. DC motors. I'm going to grab the camera. Now, if we take a look at this, a couple things that I would like to point out immediately. First of all, hopefully you can see that if we were on Antiques Roadshow right now, they would be pretty excited to see it actually has a stamp from, and hopefully I can zoom in in post production, but if I come in a little bit closer, you can even see right here the word park. Unfortunately, the part before that, Menlo Park, has been lost to time. But there are some really interesting features on this electric motor. First of all, you'll notice that it has a large iron core. And that iron core allows it to focus and create a stronger magnetic field. Right here, this is all made out of iron. I can see loops of wire around it, continues around, and then actually over to the other side as well. So this is one big iron core. We have wires wrapped around that iron core that are going to create a magnetic field. And when we learn about AC, we're going to learn that if you take wire and wrap it around an iron core like this, that magnetic field is produced in the iron core and also goes to the other side as well. So by creating a magnetic field on this side, it creates a magnetic field over on this side as well. This acts as the stator, S-T-A-T-E-R, for the electric motor. Now, I also see that I have a whole series of loops right here, also wrapped around an iron core. And these loops are connected individually to different parts of our commutator right here. Hopefully, we can zoom in and see that so that as this turns, it will electrically connect to just one loop at a time. Actually, I think it's two, one on each side. But, and it'll continue to turn. When that happens, current flows through this loop right here. What's it create? Yeah, that's right. It creates a magnetic field. And that magnetic field pushes against the magnetic field here. 
and that propels it forward. As it does it, it turns off and the next one is connected. Creates a magnetic field, pushes against this magnetic field here and pushes and keeps happening over and over and over again. This is how we take electrical energy and we convert it into useful work because now we have a pulley connected to the end, just a metal disc that can be connected with a rubber belt to any other device. And I can take electrical energy and convert it into motion. All right, so um, it took some help from students a few years ago. I believe Nate Cotson might have been the one who pulled this out of the cabinet. Nate, hope you're doing well. Probably the most mechanically gifted student I've ever had the privilege of teaching. I'm going to first disconnect my power supply. Here's my connections. And what is really neat about this is that it takes the electric current, our DC power supply, and it powers the magnet here. And it also connects to the brushes that connect to the commutator that connect to the coil. So the electricity is, is really doing two parts here. So with that, let's see what happens. Now I have this hooked up to a five volt power supply. So the voltage itself is not very high, but the current it can supply is. So hopefully when I plug this in, what happens? Nothing. But this thing's probably 120 years old, and the connections probably aren't that good. So let's, uh, oh, got a little spark there. Oh, oh, oh. All right, so I've got a connection here. Let's see how my connection is on the other side. And if I give it a little push, it works. So what's happening? Can you see it? is that the magnetic field is being created in each one of these loops. It turns on and off as the brushes hit the commutator. And it does useful work by spinning this pulley. There it is. Thomas Edison, DC electric motor. I'm going to pull the plug on that. Cool. Now, here's what I wanted to show you. And let me uh, may maybe back up for a moment. If I could get my production crew out. Oh, thank you, guys. Nice work. Just like this electric motor with the fan that I connected to. And the equivalent of the same electric motor over on this side. If I do mechanical work here, I can produce an electric current. Can we do the same thing with one of Thomas Edison's early DC motors? Let's see. One way I could measure that current, I could try to hook it up to my galvanometer, but I think instead what I may do is measured directly the voltage on this multimeter. So hopefully, <laughs> we get a nice connection. Hopefully, the camera can actually pick up the reading. We'll see if that works or not. I'm gonna make a connection here and here. And we're gonna take 120 year old electric motor and create electricity oh. with it. Oh, that looks good. Now. <laughs> Now, it's on the millivolt scale, so I'm not producing that much electricity. I'm also not doing a lot of physical work at the same time either. I'm just giving this thing a gentle little pull. Oh. So Edison takes his electric motor, and we can also use it as an electric generator. If I spin it the other way, oh, I get a negative electric potential, a negative voltage. There it is. I so before we get too deep into the production of alternating current, 
from Nikola's Tes Nikolai Tesla, I wanted to make sure I returned to how an electric motor works. I think we might, uh, we might check out a few other things as well. Fair enough? You think you got it? <laughs>